so here I am in the storage unit, going to pick up some items to take to auction tomorrow. And sure enough, there's a guy moving in and he has some bikes. And of course, as a reseller, you're always gonna ask, hey, you got anything for sale? Sure, they're always gonna say, yeah, well, for the prices, right? I'll always sell whatever. And long story short, I bought a couple bikes. So I'll show you what I got and why I bought them and what I paid. All right, here you go. Here's the first one. It's like an all blacked out beach cruiser. And obviously it works. I was just video recording myself riding through the storage unit. They were laughing at me up front because they could see me on video. It's not every day to have someone riding their bike through here. Now here is a bolo item. I know it has some duct tape on the seat, but this is like an old school BMX and Mongo's pretty good brand. And then it said on here, the sticker is Legion. So Mongoose Legion. And of course I did a quick search on eBay and boom, it popped up pretty good. And this one's in fairly good condition. So you'll see, I'll show the comps on the screen. And I paid for this and that together I paid a hundred dollars and I know that I'll make my money back plus just on that bike and then this one I'm probably just gonna keep for myself because I figure I'll take this down to like the strand or down the boardwalk in Galveston or just locally around the neighborhood it's kind of fun to just have a easy lazy bike to just ride around and not have to really care about and for the price of what I got it for, shoot, I don't care if it gets ruined or not. But yeah, keep your eyes out for any vintage BMX. That's a huge bolo, guys. It's same as skateboards. If you see any like the old school skateboards, like Tony Hawk and all that, big money. Little fan. I'll show some comps on some skateboards too, in case you see those. Just the decks alone, even if they're not functional. People think that, oh, well, it's broken, it's old, and it doesn't work anymore, so they sell it for cheap. No, collectors pay big just for the actual wood decks, is what they're called. All right, I'll keep going. Oh, wait, no, I'll keep going, showing you all some stuff here. All right, so now how I'm moving. Wait, I know, right? Right now, y'all's jaw is like, oh my God. Okay, so I have the shelving, even though you can't see much. A lot of stuff that I'm just gonna start donating that's not worth as much. I'm gonna start like cherry picking or whatever, but this is it, guys. I'm moving into that, you know, the 45 by 15. These are each 10 foot by 20 foot. So 10 by 20 there, 10 by 20 there, which makes the 20 by 20. And ugh, tons of bolos. Y'all are going to have rapid fire bolos. You're going to start seeing me post some things. Ugh. All right. There you go. That's what I'm dealing with. Y'all tell me in the comments section how long you think it's going to take me to move all this and do a decent job at the new place with organizing and everything. Huh. It's not going to take five minutes, that's for sure. <laughs> Well, it's kind of slim pickings lately, but there's a sign. 16706 Elm Park Way. Hmm, we'll see what happens. So it's Saturday morning, 11.30. I'm supposed to be at the auction house to drop off 10 items. I'm gonna try to squeeze them for a little bit more. Hopefully around 15, 20 items because I'm really trying to purge some inventory and uh, get organized, obviously, as you saw in previous videos. So I ended up getting a couple good bolo items that y'all should keep an eye out for whenever you're going to garage sales or estate sales on um, the recent uh, insert that I did where I stopped at uh, like a small mom and pop sign that I had saw. And 
sure enough, it was um, like a lady who was moving to Arkansas, I think. Yeah, she was moving to Arkansas with her kids, and she was just getting rid of a lot of things. And um, there were two items there that she sold me for a pretty good price. I mean, I paid up a little bit, but um, you'll see, and I'm going to be dropping them off here at the auction house just because they're kind of big, they're kind of bulky, kind of risky on shipping, and heavy on shipping. So not necessarily the best best mix for a eBay listing because um, you're battling people not wanting to pay the high price on shipping insurance whatever so the first item is a brass fire screen protector where it keeps the ashes and everything else from flying out of your fireplace whenever you have a fire going on and right now is a good time because it's getting cold obviously for people to want that type of thing one of the ways you can tell if things are vintage uh, if you look at the screws you don't want to see Phillips, and Phillips are like the the um, the X, where you use the you know the tool, a Phillips screwdriver. You know what a Phillips is, but uh, you want to look for slotted or the like a single line screw, because back in the day on all vintage stuff, for the most part, uh, slotted screws is what they're called. If you see that on an item, then that, that's a good indicator that it's vintage. And this has all slotted screws, solid brass, and I could just tell from the lady's stuff that it was vintage. Um, and then the next major thing that I got, and I didn't know it until I actually did the comps on eBay, and she was kind of upselling it while I was talking to her. And um, it's a vintage, like, carousel riding horse, like... Um, like little kids will ride on it but it's hand carved and it has uh, one of the search terms that people really like is that it has real horse hair so if you do a search and I'll try to put screenshots of all these things that I'm telling you plus you'll see them uh, when I drop them off um, is real horse hair like riding horse and it's hand carved wood and you'll see they go for a pretty good freaking penny so I only I got both of those items plus a couple of throw-ins all for a hundred bucks and I should get my money back just on the horse easily but there's a good chance that uh, the screen goes for a hundred bucks too depending on who's bidding on the auction so I made money I didn't lose money and uh, we'll have to see plus I got other items that I'm gonna drop off and I will show you the comps on those as well so wish me luck, I'm on the way, and I will cut to the auction house now. Back to the auction house, just got here, walking in, getting a cart, shoot the shit a little bit, pardon my French. And, I don't know, uh, Tanya said she is on her way, we'll see what happens. She's slacking today, she was getting some Z's in, I think. Y'all can uh, knock her in the comments if you want to, I won't say anything. This year, really all right, y'all, so I got everything picked out of the car, and I will show you what I'm dropping off, plus I'll drop some screenshots so you can see some comparable comps of what they go for. This is a vintage brass fireplace, like, cover screen. Keep an eye out for those. There's some really good ones, especially the ones that looks like a peacock, I want to say. Here's a Norman Rockwell. Here's like an Indian print that's signed and numbered by the artist, whoever Shoemaker is. See Shoemaker? These vices, Craftsman vice, you can usually see the name and then you can always see like a model number on the side. That's about a hundred bucks. Tool uh, case. A leveler here, uh, air blower, some large gardening tools, some brand new modern like coffee cups. This right here is like a uh, uh, bronze statue uh, that's really heavy. This is the horse I was telling you about. It's like hand carved wood and it has real horse hair, which is a search word and desirable by collecting. Is, um, a real leather fossil like I don't know if it's a, is it a crossover purse what is it called uh, I think it's too short to me oh yeah it looks like a good 
I don't know. It's real leather and fossil, and there are some decent comps for fossil leather purses, if y'all see. I offered that to Tanya because of her taco fetish, but she didn't want it, so it's going up for auction. <laughs> She's not laughing. I don't know if she took offense to that. <laughs> All right, here's some vintage Bose speakers. Y'all have heard of that brand. I shouldn't even have to tell you that, but it's from 1985. So that's everything I'm dropping off, guys. Picking up a check, and then we'll see what happens from there. And I just drop it off, and here's a pretty cool bronze statue. Never heard of that artist, be honest. But I did a quick search, and there's some heavy hitter ones that are out there that are selling for thousands of dollars. So I might want to keep my eyes out on that. Here's my walkthrough. Let's see if there's anything that catches my eye. Try to go slow. Here's some VHS and he's sealed. Not really. It's a pretty cool lamp. Vintage lamp. Like tulip lamp, I guess. Some Hot Wheels. Just a bug. go lot 186 and lot 185 this is what you want to see guys if y'all are looking for vintage type toys vintage teenage mutant ninja turtle and then this is like seven inch old wrestling figures you know some of them broken and all that um actually these aren't the rubberized ones the ones i was thinking of have like a rubber but these yeah these are on the money. I don't know if I can see the markings on the bottom. Anywhere? Yeah, I'm trying to see if I can see any markings anywhere on them. Just to show you all a year or a date, but those are very interesting. These, if I see any red lines, I'd be interested in those. Here's some old comic books. Here's some sealed 1990 clear football. Okay, there's some things here. Here's some sealed packs. Vintage Batman. Batman. Alright. Some more cards. Elvis and wrestling over there. Sometimes those wrestling ones, especially if it's like the Hulk Hogan era and stuff, those could be worth some money. 1990 Skybox. Hmm. Interesting. Now, what's this binder of? This binder is filled with comic cards. Lot number 161. Hmm. Okay. This is interesting. There's a model. It's like a vintage Star Trek models. Okay. Oh, there's some decent stuff. Big blue. If that was an Arctic or. Hmm. Isn't that cool? That's the view. So I almost forgot. I dropped off my items, but I did win some things, and I'm gonna show you what I got and why I got them. All right, first thing is, I got this card, and it's already graded, and it's a rookie, and even though it's not the 
your most popular player, Mark Jackson. It is a mint nine, and it's worth about 20 bucks. And I only paid two dollars for it. And for those of y'all that know cards, I mean, it costs more than two dollars just to send it in and get submitted for grading. So I figured, um, you know, for 20 bucks value for two dollars, that's a pretty good return. I might sit on it long tail for a while. Uh, before it sells, but hell, I put it up for 20 bucks and entertain offers, and somebody eventually will buy that. Next thing I got is brand new sealed vintage construction paper, and I don't know, Riverside, I've never heard of the brand, but I did look up the comps while the auction was going on, and a lot of new construction paper, I mean, as weird as it sounds, I only paid four dollars for the whole lot and there's eight of them here and i think it's worth like 30 40 bucks next thing i got i only paid like six dollars was for this entire like it was like eight um like landscaping lights that are hardwired if you've ever gone to try to buy these it's pretty darn expensive and i happen to have a need for them so that'll be for personal use um, and then this, I just thought it was pretty creative. Beware of ninjas. It's like one of those light up signs. And I don't know if I'm gonna keep it or I thought maybe it'd be a fun sign to send to some YouTube friend that has a bunch of signs on their, either their shed or their cabin or whatever. So y'all tell me, should I keep the sign or should I send it to a YouTube friend so they can de decorate their walls? Obviously I have to plug it in and make sure it works. That's everything that I got. And I think that's about it. I might go buy if they're still open. There's a moving sale that might have some vintage jewelry. I'm gonna see if they pulled that out yet and see what they're asking. If I can't uh, be lucky on that, then this will be the end of the video. Does this bring back memories for anybody? Fun dip, ice cream truck. Look at this, it's only $3 and you get 22 card pouches. So you know what I was thinking? This might be a fun like live video giveaway where I mail out a fun dip to viewers. So I'm gonna pick up a packet of 22 and just give it away in a, a future live that I do right around Valentine's. Well, that was a snippet that I forgot to record that I should mention. I was outside of the auction house bringing in everything on the carts and if y'all saw in the video I had a like like solid bronze on wheels it was like a uh, like a Hindu Hindi like uh, religious like statue with like four horses that thing was heavy it was like 50 pounds I'd, I swear the thing was freaking heavy uh, anyhow guy walked up and he it caught his eye or whatever and he was talking to me outside of the auction house and I told him, I was like, until I wheel it into their front door, it's all mine. So if you have anything you want to make an offer on, by all means, if it's a fair offer, I'll take it. And I'm immediately doing the math because, you know, I have to pay 40% commissions. Plus I have to pay uh, every item that I list with them gets like a dollar fee, listing fee or something like that. So I don't know. It's pretty easy math. If he makes me a fair enough offer, that... You know, I would subtract forty percent of that, and then that's what I would technically get from the auction house or whatever. So, he offered me forty dollars, and I initially, like, before he even finished his sentence, I was like, "No, I'm sorry. I appreciate the offer, though, but I I know how much it's worth, and I know I'll get more at the auction house, even with the commission structure and everything else." Then he comes back, like maybe ten minutes later, when I'm about to wheel it in, and he says, "How about eighty? Will you take eighty? Turn bucks? left on East Nassau Park." The reseller I am, and knowing that he's coming back, so he's on the hook. He he wants it. If he's coming back and making a double of his offer, he definitely wants it. So I um, do the tactic. I'm like, I tell you what, you give me a hundred cash, and it's yours right now. And before I finish my sentence, he says okay. So here I am doing side deals outside of the auction house. Give the guy a hundred. He give the guy this in three point four miles. I don't even know what it's considered, but um, he gives me hundred bucks cash. So I'm making side deals outside the auction house. Hopefully they don't see this and 
you know, get upset, but technically it's the truth. It's not theirs on any type of agreement until it wheels through their front door, right? Y'all tell me if I'm right or wrong. But I'm on my way to um, the same moving sale that I got the, the fireplace screen from and that horse that you saw because um, I forgot that they said they were gonna bring some stuff out and some of it might be some vintage jewelry. So I already talked to Tanya and she said that she might be interested in that if it happens to be anything good. And maybe we'll get lucky and we'll find some gold too. So let's see what happens. Um, if I don't find anything, I'll let you know and that'll be the end of the video. So y'all, here's a good example of what I love seeing. Handmade, non-assuming signs and you know that they did not know how to advertise it on any of the apps or anything, so. Good area. I've had some really good You've luck in this neighborhood too. Left. So let's see what I can find. I'm gonna try to buy, see this cross? Let's see if it's still out there. Yeah, see this metal cross? I'm gonna see if I can't get that. I think that's a Celtic cross, and you know I am with Ireland, so. All right, guys, y'all can start laughing now. I went to the moving sale and started helping her out and getting some things down from the attic. And sure enough, got some yard decor. This is like a brass, like, I, I guess it measures the time based on what the sundial does. I mean, that's like a big, large cross. It's pretty big just for keeping a lot of like vintage Christmas stuff, lights that are like brand new old stock. That's like a whole thing of like fairies for like a, a garden. And I, I have a friend of mine, he hasn't been on YouTube for a while, but him and his wife, and it's kind of like a joke, but they have like fairies in their garden. So I was just gonna see if he's still alive. And if so, just mail that to him and his wife. We'll see what happens. These were all half price. Pretty cool, like lights to hang in the garden or like in your backyard patio, you put like a tea light in there. And then this, she said, came off of like a, an old ship and it's like an ice bucket and it's brass. So I don't know, I thought it was pretty cool. More Christmas stuff, a plate. Um, but this is a huge bolo and I'm outside their place still. So I'm not, you know, I'm trying to talk, but look at this guys. It's a vintage fan. And if you can read it, Emerson, and it still works. Look at that. Huge bolo. I'll put the comps up. If y'all see old fans, pay attention, guys. And then she had another old fan. This one's General Electric, but it wasn't complete. It's just like the parts. And I gave her like 10 bucks for that, but just for the parts alone, Jesus, guys. I, I had a score here, so. And then y'all should know Margarita Machines, especially the, um, the ones, uh, what is it? Jimmy Buffett, Margarita Machines? It makes them for you. Those are always a good bolo. All right, let me get things packed up. And I think that's about it for this video. Y'all have a good one. Thanks for watching. Wow, y'all, that was a pretty exciting Saturday. I'm just now getting to my storage unit and unloading all the things that I got, but I wanted to stop and not only thank y'all for watching, but I wanted to say thank you too to one of our fellow YouTubers, Pete the Craigslist Hunter. Uh, you probably already know him already. I can't imagine you're not already subscribed. Um, he's been a long-term content creator, but I would have never known Truth be told, I would have never known that I could buy these fans and find these and flip them for this much money without having watched some of his older content, his videos, where he actually had a friend that sold him some fans also. That's how I knew about the fans. So it's kind of why we do what we do um, and create these videos, help each other grow and learn and make money when we can. So I want to say thank you. And then also, I, I didn't even show you this part, so check this out. This is another uh, part of the buy that I got, and it's pretty ridiculous. I just ran the comps on it. Um, it's only the parts of a fan, but the parts, just the parts alone, are selling for a lot of money. So check this out. So there's the Emerson fan, right, that I bought. It's complete and it runs. But this 
was in a box and she thought that the whole fan was there but actually there's no motor it's just like the the base and then the the i guess the cage i guess it's called and then the old like propellers i don't know what they're called but these it's like an old ge fan and these parts plus those parts people want them and i'll show you some comps So I bought that whole box for 10 bucks, guys. She knew it was old, like she knew that one was old, but they were moving and they did not want to have to mess with it. So happy to take it off their hands.